Hi everyone, this is Kathy Gross, Kurt's Wood Book, Keeping Clean and Simple, and today I want to talk about the steps to get your file tax ready for your accountant or your CPA or whoever is doing your taxes for you since it's that time of year. One thing I can share with you before I go into this process is that you should be keeping your QuickBooks file up to date year round so that way you're not waiting at the very last minute to get everything to your tax preparer because that's one thing that they do not cotton to very well and they can also charge you higher rates for waiting to the last minute especially if you're providing them with a bunch of paper receipts and expecting them to magically whip that up into shape for you so before we even get started with this process is that you should go ahead and keep everything up year round so with that said, I'm going to go through really quickly what I call the client data review or the client data file review process. So we're going to go ahead and start with the first item, which is basically going to the chart of accounts at which you can see that I am in right now. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm doing a client data review is I like going into each line item and running a report for all dates. So as you can see, I'm in the checking account and I'm going, and it usually defaults to 90 days ago. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this to all dates and run the report. What you'll want to notice is where you can see the cleared column where you'll see maybe a few R's and you'll see some C's if anything has been accepted from the banking center that's cleared the banking center you'll see C's here where you see nothing neither an R or a C that means that that transaction was entered manually and you want to make note of that because that's going to be really important when you actually go in here and try to reconcile these accounts so based on what I'm looking at here and this is just the checking account is that the account has basically been reconciled through the end of 12 31 2020 but not at all for 2021 whatsoever so we're gonna have to go in here and reconcile this but before we do that we want to go back to the chart of accounts and go into all these line items and even these that have zero items in there, you're going to look, want to look and see what's in those line items. So that's the first thing that I recommend is that you do that process. So the second process, we're going to go ahead and switch gears right here. So that way you can see the second thing that you need to do. Okay, so the second thing you need to do after you run all the reports for each of the line items on the chart of accounts and looking at whether or not those items have either been reconciled, cleared, or whatnot, you want to go in here and run at least the profit and loss and the balance sheet for all dates and to segment those by month if you can, depending on how far back the data goes. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the profit and loss. I'm going to go ahead and customize it. And we're going to do columns by month and we're going to go to all dates. And if your data goes back a significant ways, you may want to break this up. But by going by all dates, you can see by month if, what's going on. And you can also look for any variances if you have any negative uh, amounts where there should not be any negative amounts. Then you want to make note of that. So in this case, I'm just going, I'm not really analyzing this, but this is what you want to do. You want to go ahead and look through and see if there's any negative amounts and why there may not be any negative amounts. And as you can see, as the months go on, the amounts are less and less. And, and a lot of that is because we haven't been through the banking center yet to add all these transactions. There's still a still significant amount of transactions that are hanging out in the banking center that have not been dealt with at this point. So that's the second thing that you want to do. You want to run the profit and loss and you're going to do a similar process for the balance sheet. So let's do that real quick. We're going to go to all dates and then we're going to do by months. And you can run either cash or accrual. I'm just going to leave it on accrual. 
and then that way you can kind of see like I said what's going on and like I said a lot of these totals are probably not going to be correct because the the third thing that you're going to want to do before you go on is to go to the banking center and let's go ahead and switch gears right now and do that so that way you can see that process okay so the third thing that you want to do is you want to go to the banking center and you might even want to do this first before you run all the line item reports either way what you want to do is you want to analyze and see basically what's still hanging out of the banking center because that's going to reflect the totals on your reports it's also going to reflect the totals that are in each line item on your report so we're basically right now in the fidelity rewards visa account let me go ahead and click over to the checking account and what we want to do basically is we want to sort by column you're heading so this is basically what we want to do is bring the oldest transactions up so as we can see we still have transactions going back to november of 2021 that we have not entered into our record from this account if you go to categorize you can do the same thing as well you can bring up the oldest uh, accounts that have been entered in there but for our purposes let's go ahead and click on the newest ones and some of these are QuickBooks payments transactions that have been input but the rest of this stuff it, it, to the extent that there's anything in for review here it's going to skew our report same thing with the Fidelity Visa rewards and we can do the same thing here we can click on the date column and look and see to the extent that any of these transactions are sitting out here in for review they're not playing any role in our reporting so I might venture to say you'll probably want to do this first before you run any reports but you don't want to do anything with this yet you're just basically doing a cursory overall review to see where the problems lie and you're not fixing anything at this point so anyway those are the th three things that you want to do basically in a short cursory review and this is not a deep dive by any means but by doing those three things you at least kind of get a handle on whether or not you have um, reconciliations that need to be done you have any transactions that still need to be posted that haven't been as you can see we do from all these three accounts here and you'll also see whether or not the reconciliations have been done and how far back they go so anyway I hope this helps you today y'all have a wonderful day y'all take care and we will see you soon thank you for watching I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and share it with others. My goal is to publish at least one new video per week on QuickBooks desktop or online topics, the occasional motivational video, and a few surprises thrown in here and there. I would love to talk to you about how to help you optimize your knowledge and usage of QuickBooks desktop or online. My Calendly link is in the slide. Please use that to reach out to me to schedule a free 45-minute initial consult. I would love to talk to you about your QuickBooks desktop or online training needs. Again, have a wonderful day, and until next time, we'll see you soon. Take care.